Hi, and welcome to Rose Red Homestead, where today it is late afternoon and we're going to fix dinner. Um, as you know, our channel focuses on three major topics, self-reliance, food security, and emergency preparedness. We are always thinking about and looking for things that we can pre present to our subscribers, to our community, on topics that will be very helpful to you as you look toward the future with a bit of uncertainty perhaps, and uh, things that we can do to be as prepared as possible, and so we don't have any worries about it because we know that we are prepared. So as I was uh, looking around, thinking about meals again, I'm always thinking about meals, things that we can do off-grid, things that we can uh, pull ingredients from our food storage in order to make those recipes. I came across a series of YouTube videos on uh, stir-fry, and at first I just passed them by, and then I got to thinking about it and thought, hmm, I bet we could use that. And then I found a wonderful YouTube channel. It, it, the title of it is All Recipes, and the uh, presenter I found quite delightful. And I am going to put the link to her channel in the description below this video so that you can watch her complete video. I'm taking a lot of the information from what she presented. I'm tweaking it just a little bit, and I have an ulterior motive. I named it. I named it something different than she did. Um, I'm calling it Universal Stir Fry Method, and essentially that is what she does. And um, and I really loved what she had to say. And so you can go there, and she has some stir fry recipes that you can even uh, look at on her channel. The thing that I really liked about it is that this is a formula. It is a formula that once we understand what that formula is we can plug in lots of different types of foods in order to make this stir fry. And that is perfect for what we want for off-grid cooking as well. So today, we're going to make a regular stir fry with ingredients that we've purchased from the store. And then we're going to apply the formula in a later video for a stir fry that we will use strictly our food storage ingredients from level one of our leveling up our food storage. So that includes the integration of our pantry, our refrigerator, and our freezer. So just the ingredients that we have stored in those three places is what we will be using for making the um, stir fry for an, an, an off-grid situation. So. So at another time. Yes, at a different time. Yeah. Yes, that video will come later. Let's go over what this method is, and you'll find that it's just as easy as can be. Now, I do not have anything for you to download on this because there's not really a recipe. There is a structure, and you can take notes on that. You can also look at her video, and between the two of us, you can come up with your own structure for stir-fry. Stir-fry... Um, Doing it the way that we are doing it is a very nutrient-dense food, a very nutritious meal, high in nutrients, low in calories, because it uses a lot of veggies, and this time it is fresh veggies. So here is the method. We're going to be doing four things. Now, that does not include what we're going to put the stir-fry on, either rice or noodles. And behind this screen on my stove, I already have cooked some rice. It's, it's hot and ready to go because once we get going on the stir fry, it's gonna go pretty fast. So four things, protein, veggies, aromatics, sauce, period, that's it. So we can remember that, we can jot those down. So what she suggested, and I think this is really a good idea, is with your protein, you use one part to two parts of vegetable, vegetables by weight. So if I'm using a pound of protein, whatever that protein is, and I today I'm going to be using some steak, so pro, one pound of protein, and then you pair that with two pounds of vegetables. So the ratio is one protein, two veggies by weight. Then we add some aromatics and then a sauce. And she has what she calls a universal stir-fry sauce. 
So aromatics include things like, and there are a lot of things that you could use here, anything that adds a punch of flavor. And so uh, we could use ginger. You can either use fresh or you can use dry. We could use garlic. We could use lemongrass. She has several other suggestions um, in her video that we can also use as those aromatics. And then she proceeds in a certain order. I have flipped that order around just a little bit. If I were making this not in a video, uh, when I do things in a video, I sometimes do things just a little bit different, and I did a whole lot of the prep ahead of time. But if I were just starting with everything on my counter, nothing prepped but all of the pieces here, then this is what I would do. Oh, I need to talk about this. A couple of things. First of all, we cut, when we prep, we cut everything in bite-sized pieces. And if we can get them to be close to the same size so that they will all finish cooking at about the same time, that's ideal. And then we do all the prep before we even turn the heat on under our wok or our frying pan. Now, I will be using a wok today simply because I have one. Um, I almost thought I would do it in a frying pan, but she does it in a frying pan. And so you can see it done in a frying pan and you don't necessarily need a wok at all. You can use a regular frying pan. So here's the prep order that I would do if I were just at home doing it for Jim and me. I would cook the rice and set it aside and that is done. Then I would mix the sauce and set it aside. Now the reason that I would do the sauce next is that I have the things right here for the sauce and, and in fact, I've done some um, ahead work too. Like I have the tables, three tablespoons of powdered sugar here. I already have the cornstarch here. So I would like to get these things out of my way while I'm doing the rest of the prep. So I would do the sauce first, put that stuff away, and then return. And next I would do the veggies and the aromatics. Then I would prep the protein which in this case is steak. She uses chicken, so that would be another variation that you could see in her video. Then heat the wok with oil, stir and fry. Now I've put an and right there because she makes a really good point. She said, we stir and we fry. It is a two operation ordeal, stir and fry. We don't steam those vegetables. It's not stir and steam. It is stir fry. And so we're going to focus on frying these things and stirring them while they fry. So we're going to do the meat first and then set it aside. Then we're going to do the veggies and add the aromatics. Then we're going to add the sauce and then we're going to cook it until um, everything is hot and the sauce has thickened because we have cornstarch in it. And then we're ready to serve. So this is a very, very simple meal. So with that, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna put the ingredients for the sauce together right now. So, uh, and I am going to put the, um, in the recipe, she just read it out, I captured it. I'm gonna put it in the um, description of this video as I interpreted what it was. So here's our bowl, I've got the ingredients in there. I'm going to put one cup of water. I'm gonna put cold water in. I already have a tablespoon of cornstarch here. We add cornstarch to cold water. It easily dissolves with cold water. So there's that. And then it calls for a fourth of a cup of soy sauce. And the next time I buy soy sauce, I like it in big containers, I'm going to get the low sodium. A tablespoon of rice vinegar. Doesn't that sound good? Yeah, it does. Goes along real, real well with the rice. Then uh, some grated ginger. I'm going to put, and I've already grated my ginger. This was fresh ginger. I'm going to put about a teaspoon in. I'm doing kind of a small batch because there's just the two of us. I think this probably will be two meals for us. 
and then a pinch of red pepper flakes. And then we're done. So then we whisk these ingredients together. And then we're going to set this aside until we need it. I'm going to take a second and clear the deck. I'll be right back. So we are now ready to turn our wok on because everything that we need is ready. It's ready to rock and roll. And so we're good to go. I'm going to turn this on. And we just need to put a little dab of fat in the bottom. And we need to use something that won't smoke all over the place. I am using some of our beef tallow. We've recently done a video on that. I can put the card right up here. So in case you would like to know uh, more about that, you can just click on that card and go right to the video on how to turn beef fat into beef tallow. I'm going to keep it handy. We may need to add a little bit more later. And so, this wok heats up very fast. And now I am going to add the veggies that take long, no, I'm going to add the meat. Meat first. So in goes the meat. Stir and fry. It's nicely browned now, and I think it's done enough. So I rinsed off this plate where the raw meat was, and I'm going to put the partially cooked meat back on it. And next, I'm going to be putting in the veggies that require a little bit longer cooking. The broccoli, the carrots. I do need a little bit more oil there. The red peppers. So I'm giving these a little bit of a head start on the cooking. While those continue to cook, I'm going to do the garlic. And my garlic press. Now I'm going to put in the snow peas. A little more fat. We want the veggies done to the, uh, what is it called, tender crisp. We don't want them fully cooked and soggy. We want them still to have a little bit of freshness to them. So here are the mushrooms. And the bok choy. And some green onions.
We do a lot of cooking in our kitchen on our videos on this little uh, butane um, burner. And along with that, we, um, it can be used in the kitchen. The safety precautions that we use along with it are, we have right over here a little carbon monoxide alarm, and we have a, a door and a window cracked just a little bit. Never use propane indoors. Can you smell this, Jim? No, I don't can. This beef tallow adds a lot. Oh, that's good. It's very mild, but still, just even a little bit of flavor is great. And it's wonderful cooking. This is really the first time I have done any cooking with beef tallow, and I am loving this. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, the next thing is, we need to add the aromatics. So, I'm going to put in about that much grated ginger and a couple of, um, couple of cloves of pressed garlic. And we're going to cook those in here for just a minute. You should be able to smell it now. We're going to add the meat back in. And we're going to add in some sauce. I'm not sure that I'm going to need all of this sauce. So I'm just going to start with about half of it. All right, the sauce is not thick enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more cornstarch in with just a little bit. of the rest of the sauce. We don't want to boil the veggies. We want them stir-fried covered with this delicious sauce. There we go, that did it. So now the thought sauce has thickened. We have it just where we want it. And I'm turning the heat off. So we are getting ready for dinner. The rice is warm, still hot. Fluffing it just a little bit. Jim, tell me how much. A little bit more would be fine. How's this? That's fine. Okay. And then some of this. Yummy stir fry. Oh, look at that. Is that about right That's for enough. you? We're not going to have enough for two meals, and that is just fine. Looks like we are. Is that enough? Yeah, it is. It's yeah. For two. Yeah, it is, I think. Okay. So here is our dinner using universal stir fry method. So coming up in a future video is how we can use this very same method using food storage ingredients. So I hope you will join us for that one as well. Thank you for being here. I hope this is going to um, help with your stir fry in some way or another. Please report in the comments things that you do to make your stir fry extra delicious and how this formula might fit in with how you do it. So thank you. We appreciate our community so very much. And we will see you soon with more videos.